In this video, we will introduce the concept of polyglot persistence. Imagine that you are dealing with a business application, for example, some application in e-commerce, and we need to choose a database for different parts of our application. In our application, we are dealing with session data. The session data is coming from web applications that keep track of interactions of users with the web application. Then we have various logs. We have price updates, and we would like to keep track of those and monitor them in real time. We have product information. Our products come with a variety of descriptions, depending on our vendors, and some of them would have very different organization than the others. Then we have a system that is dealing with customer-agent relationships. Customers and agents can enter in a variety of relationships, and we may also have to deal with distributors and manufacturers, and one entity can play various roles. Then there is the price and operational analytics. They will be dealing with large volumes of data. We also have a transactional data from our e-commerce systems. And now when we look into all of this, the question is, what database would be the best choice for our application? Well, it turns out that not a single database is going to be best for everything. And this is why we will use different databases for different functionality. Now, what we will show here is an extreme case in which we are choosing one database for each of the areas of our application. First, for session data, we can store our data in a key value store. The key can be the user ID, and the value would be the content of the user session. In dealing with logs, particularly when the values are coming with great speed, columnar stores would be very useful for that. We can also organize our data so that we have product and every price update can be done or stored in a separate column with the timestamp as the name of the column. Product information that can vary in its format can be best stored in a document database. Customer agent relationships will benefit from being stored in a graph database where we can explore the relationships between different parts. Dealing with large volumes of data, as in price and operational analytics, can be achieved with Hadoop and conventional MapReduce and batch jobs. And finally, for the transactional data, we have a place for our old friend relational database. The fact that we have a big data and NoSQL stores does not mean that the relational database does not have its place. Typically, relational database is the best system for dealing with transactions. Polyglot persistence is when we use a variety of database stores in one application. Notice that in this organization, for our particular application, we are using six different databases. Technologically, that can be an optimal choice, but organizationally, you will have now six different headaches. For each of these systems, you need to be able to find somebody who is familiar with the technology, somebody who will be able to administer, configure, and fine tune the systems. And normally you would go with that many different stores only when you're pushing your systems to their extreme capabilities. Normally for a smaller system, perhaps you could consider a relational database that can handle all of this to some extent. So normally you would try to minimize the variety of these databases and make your operations easier. But you know that if you are pushed to the limits of the technologies, you could go into true polyglot persistence and have a variety of stores deployed. Now, a software engineering aspect is that you would like to reduce coupling from a particular data store in your application. In this diagram, we have two parts in our application. We have a client package and we have a product data access object. Product data access object is going to be a software component that is encapsulating access to the database. So let's say for our products, we are using MongoDB, but at some point, for a variety of reasons, we may decide to switch to Cassandra or vice versa. We would not like that the details of the database propagate throughout the whole application. And we would like to be able to localize the changes just to one narrow area of the product data access object. This is using one of the standard design patterns for enterprise computing. In design, for polyglot persistence. We recommend that you think about change and design for change, but do not overcomplicate. One of the interesting areas of exposing database functionality is working with NoSQL, REST, and cloud applications. So these technologies, REST and cloud, would provide a great way for separating data from particular technologies. 
Usually we are using REST for communication and some databases already come with service APIs and there are many APIs that have been developed by the community. Also, a new thing is a database as a service cloud offering. So you don't need to install anything. Data Store is exposing its API and it is available in a cloud. So you only need to send data to the system like this.